100. Okay, well, let's take the next listener phone call. Hello, this is Science Fantastic. You're on the air. Any comments or questions? Uh, my name is Neil Baker. I'm in Kennewick, Washington. I listen to KTCR. And uh, I'm one of those people, actually, I might be one of those kooks that doesn't think we went to the moon. Um, I don't think I'm a kook. I think I've got good reason to think we didn't go to the moon. And uh, they basically boil it down to two reasons. One is that the spacesuits that the astronauts are in are impossible, and the cooling system is preposterous. The nickel porous plate ice sublimators that they allegedly use to cool themselves, uh, you can't find any information on them. We've been allegedly using them for 50 years. Uh, there's nothing in a textbook about them. There's uh, hardly anything on the Internet about them, and you've never seen a demonstration of one in operation, which could easily happen in a high vacuum chamber that NASA allegedly has. Um, the suits are impossible because those kinds of suits with the flexible membrane would be, op would be impossible to operate in a high vacuum. And that could be proven very easily on Earth also with the use of high vacuum chamber, uh, which still isn't used either. So I think the moon landings are fake. I think the Gemini spacewalks are fake. I think the International Space Station is fake. And I think the alleged spacewalks at the Hubble Space Telescope are fake, which I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Okay, well, you ask a mouthful, so let's try to break it down one by one. First of all, there is that famous uh, videotape that says that, ha, the moon program was a fake from start to finish, and they list many examples. The main examples are not actually the ones you mentioned, but let me tackle all of them. Uh, the first main criticism about our going to the moon is the flag. The moon has no air. There's no wind on the moon. We learned that in elementary school. But there are our astronauts saluting a waving flag. You've all seen that picture. It's on many a website. The our astronauts saluting a fluttering American flag. Ha! Say the critics, obviously a fake, because flags do not flutter on the moon because there's no wind on the moon. Another thing they say is, look at the shadows. If you look at the shadows, you see not one, but two. And the shadows seem to be at different angles. Now, how can you get two sets of shadows unless it's a Hollywood movie set? Aha! Uh -huh, a Hollywood movie set. Then you have a bunch of lights, and of course the camera crew don't keep track of the shadows, and one of them slipped out, and there it is, our astronauts on the moon with two sets of shadows, obviously Hollywood shadows, nothing to do with a real moonwalk. And you mentioned several others, but let's take them one at a time. First of all, the flag that flutters on the moon is not really a flag at all. It's made out of tinfoil, for God's sake. Look at the video. In one video, you actually see the astronauts putting the flag on the moon, and you clearly see that it's made out of tinfoil. It's solid. It's not a flag at all made out of cloth. So, of course, it doesn't flutter. It's actually bent out of shape precisely to give the illusion that it's fluttering. But, of course, wind does not blow on the moon. Also, if you think about it, if you have a starry night with the moon, uh, of course there are two sets of shadows you can see because the moon also casts a shadow. Well, earthshine is much brighter than moonshine. And as a consequence, of course, you're going to get multiple shadows on the moon because you have sunshine and you have earthshine, which is, as I mentioned, much greater than moonshine. And then you mentioned suits and cooling systems. And hey, let's back up a bit. First of all, on Earth, we have many vacuum systems by which we can test our spacesuits. In fact, I took a film crew from the Science Channel. We flew out to Ohio, where we have one of the world's largest vacuum chambers. We test entire booster rockets, not just little spacesuits. We test entire booster rockets on this gigantic area, much bigger than a football field which has a vacuum. You can pump all the air out. And yes, you can test spacesuits. Yes, you can test booster rockets, for God's sake. Forget spacesuits. So we know that these systems can operate in the vacuum of space. Not to mention the fact that the Chinese have sent astronauts in space. We're not the only ones who can do this. The Russians have done it, of course. We've done it. The Chinese have done it. Pretty soon, the Japanese and the Indians are going to be doing it. They don't see any problem at all. Plus, you say that we don't have a space station out there, but hey, you can actually see it. 
You don't have to believe it. You can get the coordinates and actually look at it with binoculars as it sails overhead. With radar, with sightings, we know that these things actually are up there in outer space. Now, also, some people think that we never brought moon rock back from the moon. Well, I had a chance to actually look at moon rock close up with a microscope. I was getting my PhD at the University of California at Berkeley, which got some of the moon rocks from NASA. And personally, I had a chance to look at them under a microscope, and I was shocked. Instead of ordinary rock, you had mini craters, micro craters, craters inside craters, inside craters, inside craters. The only way you could have that is with the vacuum of outer space. So in other words, we really do know that moon rock taken by the astronauts is real moon rock because these are ancient meteorite impacts all the way down to the size of a cell.